Hey, what is going on guys? This is Eli from Robux Graphics and this time we're going to model, texture and animate this hamburger in Cinema 4D. We're going to model this in a non-destructive way, so we will be using a lot of deformers and that will make it a lot easier to make small adjustments at a later stage of the modeling. If you want to take a look at the exact file I created with the camera motion added to it as well, you can download that on the Patreon page. So let's get started in Cinema 4D. We're going to start off with the bottom half of the bun. So we can do that with a sphere object. And we're also going to enable the lines on this so we can see what's going on. So now if you would want to scale down this sphere to be more flat with the green handle, you can see the sphere scales on its own. That is because it is not editable just yet, but we don't want to make it editable because we will lose the dynamics of this inside of the sphere object. So what we can do instead is changing this model mode to object mode. So with that object mode enabled, let's try again. So that's a lot better. So now we have this flat looking sphere. One more thing we would like to do is changing the topology of this, because now every line is connecting with this top point, which is just one point, and that will give some pinching when we smooth this out. Instead, we can change the type of this from standard to something like a cosahedron or anything else that is not connecting with just one point. So now we have this pebble looking sphere, but we want the top and the bottom to be more flat looking. You can do that with the deformers. I can guess there are multiple deformers that would work for this situation, but I use the melt deformer. So let's drag the melt deformer under the sphere, so it is a child of it. And you can see the sphere turned into a gray puddle of goo. So in the melt deformer under the object tab, let's change the strength to just 0%. That fixes the shape and we have the flat bottom but we want to adjust this so it is not as hard at the edges. So we can do that with the falloff. If you're in a newer version of Cinema 4D, you will see you have the fields. If you're in an older one, you will just have the falloff shapes. So it will work just the same because we will be using the spherical field or the spherical falloff. So let's pick that and you will get this shape. And you can instantly notice there is a bit more of a soft rounding at the bottom. So with this object mode still selected, we can also squeeze down this spherical field. So make sure you just select the spherical field. Let's make it flatter and move it a bit to the bottom. And maybe also scale it up in total so the size is covering more of the bum. And you shouldn't worry about these edges because we will smooth these out in a later stage. Okay, that will do for this part right now. It's also the side view that counts. Now we want the same thing at the top. So what you would think you could do is just selecting this multiformer and duplicating it by holding Ctrl or Command and dragging it up here. And then if we move up this multiformer, you can see some strange behavior. What we actually need to do is rotate this deformer. So let's undo that. And it is still centered at the bun. And let's just rotate 180 degrees like this. It is very important that you have the right stuff selected. So if you have the multiformer and the spherical field selected together at the beginning stage when scaling things down and moving it around, it will behave differently. So try again and follow along very closely if you can't get the same result. Okay, so this field can be a bit different. Um, let's soften this out like this. Maybe flatten it even more like that. Okay, so that looks like a nice bottom half of a bun. We can already place this into a subdivision surface to add some smoothing to this. So with the sphere, just hold Alt or Option on the keyboard while clicking the subdivision surface and it will be the parent of the sphere. So that is nicely smoothed. Now we can make further adjustments so it's not too curved at the bottom. Okay, so that's the bottom half. We can also hide these spherical fields in the viewport so it's not as obstructive. So now we can continue with the other parts. Let's also name this. Let's move on to the lettuce on top of this. So we can do that with a disk object. Let's drag it up here a bit so we can see what we're doing. We're going to add some more segments on this. So let's go with something that's dividable by two. Doesn't really matter that much, but I think it's a better habit to do it just that way. And now we're going to apply some more deformers to this again. A first one can be the FFD deformer. So drag it under there. And with this, we also want to check the fit to parent option so it's exactly the size of the disk and this will make it easier to adjust the shape manually by moving points around. So let's go with four points on every axis. 
on the y-axis it doesn't matter because it's flat but let's just keep it uniform and now we can go ahead and select the rectangle selection tool with the point mode and just randomly select some points and move them around to give the shape a bit more of a randomness instead of just a flat disc look okay something like this is just fine can be anything you want but i wouldn't go too strong with it because we will have more displacements on this so let's do that with the displacer deformer let's drag it under here so it's a second one and we're going to add some shading to this to make it have effect on the disk object so let's add a noise in the shader you can use any one you like but i'm going to use a very strong one which will be the cell noise so you can see it's very ugly right now but we're going to smooth this out so it will look just fine as lettuce but first let's go back to the displacer under the object tab and we're going to increase the height maybe so it is even more dramatic but we're also going to decrease the strength of this so that's an easy slider to see how dramatic the look is so let's go with 40 percent for example and now we're going to do the same thing as the bottom bun which is selecting the disk object and holding alt or option on the keyboard while pressing subdivision surface so that makes it smoother and I think this looks like some crispy lettuce or maybe even bacon if you want to so that will be a similar workflow but with a cube object probably let's move on to the meat on top of this which is the easiest one because this is just a cylinder object let's make sure it is a bit bigger so double the size which is 100 centimeters let's also make it less tall something like 32 centimeters will work let's raise it up and we're also going to add some fillet on the caps like this maybe just three subdivisions works and a bit less of a radius and now we can also place this into a subdivision surface again so it's really smooth let's see if we have pinching on the top i don't think it's too dramatic because we will have displacements in the texture later so you won't notice so let's move on to the cheese the cheese is also quite simple we're going to use a cube object of course let's raise it up again and the size is just fine we only need to adjust the height of it to just four centimeters but we're also going to add some more segments to this so let's go with something like five on just the x and the z value and now we can adjust this again with a deformer which will be the ffd deformer again so let's drag it under there fit to parent and we're going to replicate the grid points on this so that's five on every side except the y value which only can go down to two because we have some height to this let's go back to the point mode with the rectangle tool selected and we're going to select these two points at every corner and move them down a bit okay let's also see how this looks if we place it in a subdivision surface i think that looks kind of good as well but you don't have to you can also hide the deformers if you want to again what you could also do if you don't like these edges right here is adding a bevel deformer for example so let's drag this under there as well and everything is just fine except you want to use the use angle to be sure it's only subdividing the edges right here let's move on to the tomato slices we're going to just use a tube object for this and also a cylinder object let's make them both at once move them up again for the tube let's go with something like an inner radius of 26 for example and an outer radius of 36 and of course it doesn't need to be this high so let's change the height to just 10 centimeters okay let's do the same thing with the cylinder let's go for 8 centimeters then so it's a bit smaller and we also want the radius to be smaller maybe we can just do it like this okay so now we want to add some fillet to this tube so under here not as strong of course so let's go with just one or two centimeters and i think that should be fine and i think that should be fine so let's group this together as one slice and we're going to move this so we can have three of them okay so that's good now one last thing we need is the bun at the top so we can try to do this with the bottom bun because it's dynamic anyway so let's just duplicate this to the top this deformer at the top can be removed actually because we don't need it we can also rescale the sphere of course so we get a bit more volume at the top and let's also adjust this deformer 
Okay, so that are the basic components of the hamburger. We will just add a bit more details to this. So one could be adding some seats at the top here, because that's what you usually get. So to create a seat like this, we are going to use a sphere object again. Let's raise it up so we can see what's going on. We're going to add a taper deformer on this and drag it under there. Let's also make sure it's fit to parent like this and just increase the strength to something like 65% maybe. Now we can also scale this down with the object mode again. So it's flat, but make sure we have the sphere selected like this. And it also doesn't need to be as wide. So something like that looks like a small seed. But of course we need to scale it down. If you want to scale down the seed on its own, you want to do this in the model mode because we will be adding this in a cloner object. And for some reason, if you scale down things in the object mode, it will just reset the size in the cloner. So make sure we have the model mode on and let's scale down to something that's approximately the size of a seed. And let's create the cloner in MoGraph and drag the sphere under there. We're going to set the cloner mode to object so we can point it towards the sphere of the top button like this. Okay, so we can see we have some weird rotations at this side. So we need to transform the rotation in the cloner. Let's try and see which value is the right one. You can also see the scaling is not happening like we want it to maybe. So you can further adjust that under the cloner settings as well. Let's keep it like that for now. But we also want more of them. If you want to add a lot of clones, it's a good idea to use an instance mode of render instance, which is way faster, so it doesn't calculate all the individual ones, but it just copies them. The surface mode is just fine. And let's add a count of something like 140. Now we don't want them at the bottom here, because that's not what happens usually. So what we can do is adding a plane effector to this, like so. Let's go in the parameters and disable the positioning so we don't have this effect. We want to hide parts. So let's scroll down and check the visibility option. But of course we need to some fall off to this so we can say everything at the bottom should go and everything at the top can stay. So we can do that with a linear field. Let's take a look where the arrow is pointing to. So that's to this side. Let's rotate it so it's pointing to the top. Let's also scale this down a bit. And if we move it up here you can see we can adjust where you want the seeds. Okay, so that is fine. One last thing I would like to add to this are some small breadcrumbs, which is very easy to make. It's just using a sphere again. And we're going to make this very small again in just the model mode. So something like this could be a small crumb, maybe. And we're going to add a displacer deformer to this again. Under the sphere. Let's add a noise shading on this. And maybe let's make the height a bit smaller so it doesn't intersect this much. Okay, that will do for now. But we're going to add this in a cloner again. But because we have this displacer on there, it is a good idea to kind of bake this on the sphere object. So make it one object. So it doesn't need to calculate the displacement in every single clone. So let's select the sphere and the displacer like this, right click and Press connect objects and delete. So that's a crumb. And we're going to add a cloner for this where we can drag it into. Let's change the mode to a grid. And we're going to make this a bit bigger than the burger. Like so. Let's raise it up enough. And we're also going to set up a random effector on this because we don't want a pure straightened out grid. So let's go to the parameters and make it 80 centimeters maybe on every value. So we have a random positioning on this. And maybe we can also add a randomness on the scale. So a uniform scale of just one. So we have big chunks and smaller ones. Maybe just go with 0.6 for example. Okay, so that's all the modeling there is to this. Let's move on to the lighting maybe. So a first thing I want to do is adding a floor object and also a background object. So we can set up the scene for this. Let's move down the floor just a bit, so we have a bit more spacing below the bun. And we're going to set up an infinite floor look for this. So let's create a new material. And we're going to set the color to just pure white maybe. Let's drag it on top of the floor and also the background. 
And now to make this infinite, we need to right click the floor, go to Cinema 4D Tags and add a compositing tag. And in here, all we need to do is checking the compositing background option. So that's all we need to do for that. So we can move on to the actual lighting. So a first thing I'm going to add is a main light. We can use a target light. It will set it up to the center of the scene, where the hamburger is anyway. But we're also going to change the type from spotlight to an area light. Okay, so now we need to define from which angle we're also going to look at the hamburger. So let's say we create a camera and go into it and set up that first kind of angle. So maybe this will work. Okay, so we have the camera set up right here so we can see what the angles are. And we're going to move the light to the right side and also a bit from the front and make it a lot larger. Something like this. Maybe raise it up a bit and move it back just a bit as well. And we're going to change the color of this as well. So let's go with something slightly orange and also add an area shadow on this. And maybe we can also go into the shadow tab and make the shadows a bit less harsh. So just 70% density. Okay, so we can duplicate this one and move it to the left back side. Let's also make it smaller. For this one it doesn't need any countering shadows, so let's disable the shadows as well. And we're also going to make this a soft blue. Now let's add one more light at the top. You can just add an area light and rotate it. Let's make it really big, like this, and raise it above here. But for this one we don't want the full intensity, we just want it to be set at 70. And let's also go to the shadows again and set it to area with a 70% density as well. And now there is one last light I would like to add at the front. So we have it directly pointing behind the camera towards the hamburger. So let's just reuse this front one maybe and position it closely. And we're going to make this a lot smaller and also make it pure white with an intensity of just 50% so it's softer. It doesn't need to blow out everything at the front and the shadowing is just fine I guess. So let's see how this looks with the default textures. Okay, so that's starting to look fine. But maybe we can also add an ambient occlusion effect on this. And we are also going to add an other light to this, which is just a regular light with an ambient illumination option turned on and just at 70%. So that brightens up the whole scene for us. Yeah, so that looks a bit cleaner to me. Now we can continue with some of the materials of this. We're going to create the textures all in Cinema 4D. So that's fully procedural, so you don't need to download anything for this. And that is exactly what you want. So let's start off with the first one, which will be for the bread. So under the color channel, let's add a gradient to this. Let's go inside of here. We're going to set the mode of this to 2D vertical. And let's start with a very soft yellowish color. And let's go to a darker orange color. Let's go to the reflectance tab. And we're also going to adjust this. So the inner width can be a bit bigger, so 20%. And we're also going to change the color of the reflections, so it isn't pure white. We want this to be a very soft yellow. Let's also add a bump map to this. So um, the 20% strength is just fine. Let's create a layer on this, so we can add multiple layers of noise inside of it. So let's go inside and add the noise shader. Let's go inside of here. So. First of all, we want to decrease the size of this to 10%. So you can see the result up here. We're also going to make sure the black color right here is just set at 50% gray. So that makes it a bit softer. Let's also add a second noise shader on top of this. Let's make sure we set this to multiply so we can see both of them. Let's go inside of here as well. And let's change up the kind of noise to maybe booyah or something. That's a bit more of black inside of there. And we're going to change up the colors of this. So let's go with more white and less black. So that's inverted. So that gives us a bit more of a random noise, which consists out of the small speckles at the bottom and the larger patches at the top. Okay, so that's all there is for that. We can already apply this to the bottom bun and the top bun. And let's also add it on the breadcrumbs. Now we need to make sure it is being applied correctly to the buns because we want this gradient to be applied. So if we look closer, you can see we have it somewhere at the side here. So let's actually render to see how this looks. And that's not what we want. So let's go down here 
and select the tag of this top band maybe to start off with. And let's change the projection to spherical because it was a sphere in the first place and that should fix most of it. If you want to, you could also go in here in the UV texture mode and just move it down to get the effect you want. So that moves the gradient with it. But it should be fine by default. So let's do the same thing at the bottom. Spherical. But in this case it may need some kind of adjustments. So make sure we have the object selected and the tag as well. And in this case you can notice we have the dark at the top again and the light at the bottom. But we don't want that. We want this to be inverted maybe. So let's rotate this 180 degrees and we can also scale this down. So we have more of a gradient happening at the small part right here. Okay, let's disable the lines as well. Just notice that if you scale this down you also get a bit of stretching of the noise texture. But it should be fine if you don't overdo it. Okay, let's move on to the second texture which will be for the lettuce. So under the color channel we can add just a green color. We can copy this color because we will add some layers to this actually. So let's right click and copy. Let's go under the texture and add a layer and go inside of there. Where we can recreate the color channel and you should be able to paste it if you go inside of it. So paste, that's the green color. Now let's add one more layer which will be a noise shader. And we're going to set this to layer mask because we will add another color on top of this. So layer mask. We can already set up the kind of noise it will give. So let's go with cranal and give it a size of 200% and maybe even stretch it in one direction. So let's go with this first one. So it's a bit longer at one side. Let's go outside of here and add another color channel. And this one will be a bit darker. So we have this multiple layers. And so it looks like the lattice is a bit see-through, but it actually isn't. It is just faking the look. We can also go here in the Reflectance tab and slightly adjust this. Maybe decrease the fall off a bit and increase the width. And also the strength maybe. You can also change the color again if you want to, but keep it subtle. Okay, so let's drag it on top of there. And this looks good. Let's continue with the meat maybe. This one is quite simple. We are, go we are going with the brown color of course. Let's go in the Reflectance tab. And you're going to decrease the width of this. So it's a very sharp reflection. We're going to increase the width just a bit. And the strength can be all the way to 100% so it's very shiny. And now we need some kind of bump to this. So let's go to the bump channel and you're going to add a noise which will be an electric noise. I think that looks good for meat, I don't know why. So let's drag it on top of there and see how that looks. So yeah, I think that looks kind of right. Let's continue with the cheese. It will be a deep dark yellow. Let's also go to the reflectance tab. Let's decrease the width of this, but increase the strength of the specular channel. So we get a strong and sharp reflection again. Let's drag it on top of there. Let's continue with the seeds maybe, because the tomatoes are a bit more tedious to make. So, seeds. These are very small, so it doesn't need that much attention. Just a light brownish color. And let's go to the tomatoes. So we're going to set up a soft dark red color for this. Let's go to the reflectance tab where the magic will happen. So we can keep the most stuff at default but increase the strength a bit. We're going to change the color to a soft pink. Like this. And we're going to add a bump channel to this as well. Let's go and add a noise. Where we change the black to gray again. And we're going to set the global scale to just 7% for this one. So it's very small. But we're also going to decrease the strength of this. So we just want it to be something like 4%. So it's very soft and subtle. So this will be the outer shell of the tomato. Now we want the inner part to look different. So what we can actually do is just going over to the original one. And copy the color. And go up here and paste it. This is a good start. So we're going to add a layer to this again. Go inside of it and add a gradient. And we're going to set the type to star. Let's make this gradient a bit different so we get the actual sharp shape of the star. And we're going to add multiple ones of these. So another star. Maybe make it a bit more random. And we're going to change the angle. 
So we get overlapping parts and set the mode to add. You could go ahead and keep repeating this step to get multiple small segments. But let's go outside of it and set the mix mode on this color channel to add and just give it 20% maybe. Let's drag it on top of the centers. And that's a very simple way to get the basic look of a tomato without having too much detail, of course. Okay, so that's our all the textures. Now all we need to do is adding some motion to this. And that's one of the more difficult parts. I'm not sure if everyone will get the same result because it all depends on the models because we will be using dynamics for this. So it's not manual animation, it all depends on the shapes of the model. I will not be going too deep into the details of how dynamics work because that's just a whole video on its own and it is also a bit complicated to be honest. So I'm going to give you the values I used and kind of explain what they do. But if you want to get the result I have, I would just try to copy the values I will be entering. If you want to, you can play with them, of course, to see how it looks. But I will be giving some kind of base setup for this. So first thing we need to do is right clicking on the floor, going to simulation tags and add a collider body on top of this. This will mean that everything will land on top of the floor and not just go through it or something. And that's very important, of course. Now we can go ahead with the other parts. Now we can add dynamics to the other parts, but this is a very important point to save your project because it will get a bit unstable right now. Uh, it depends on your computer, how much it can handle, but if it is a bit slow, it will freeze. So make sure you save the file before continuing. So let's go ahead and create the first soft body dynamics tag. Let's do it on the sphere object and not the subdivision surface. Under here, we can already set the bounds of this to just 7% or something close to that. And we're also going to add more friction to this, so something like 90% even. That means the parts will not slide off each other when it lands. We want this to be nicely stacked on top of each other. Okay, so with that done, let's go to the soft body tab. We can extend this field so we can see more of it at once. So we have a lot of values in here and I don't know all of them either. But for most of it, you could say we set up the amount of springs that will happen. So the kind of bounces to every kind of direction or style of bounces. So that's the first field at every section. The damping on everything will say how fast the springing or bouncing will stop. So if it is set at 100%, it will stop very fast. If it is set very low, it will be very jiggly. The shear value on this will say how flat the shape will get. In this case, in this scene. And we have the flexion right here. This will say how flat the object will flow over the other ones below it. So if you set this to zero, it will kind of behave like cloth. And one more important one is right here, the stiffness. This kind of tells how much the shape will compress on its own. So let's go ahead and make some changes to this dynamic tag on the bun. It will go for most of the pieces, but not all of them. So first of all, the structural field can be just set at 25. So that's not as strong. But the damping can be much stronger, so 80%. That's okay for this. Let's increase the shear just a bit. And also the damping can be all the way up to 80% again. Let's go to the flexion, which can be set at just half of this. So let's go with 25 maybe. The damping can be up to 80% again. So that's the magic number for this one. All the rest is okay for this. We want this to be very stiff because otherwise it's too jiggly. So go to 100. We also want to set the damping to be stronger, so something close to 80 or 70% again. And all the rest should be fine. I'm not going to play this animation just yet, but if you want to preview this, you can press the play button. It may freeze for you, so if you can't get it to stop by clicking the button again, you can also press F8 on the keyboard. So that's a good shortcut to remember in this case. We are also going to set the preview range to 240%. So we have a bit of a tail to this. Okay, so that's the first tag. We are going to apply this tag to multiple parts of the hamburger. Make sure you always do it on the shape and not the subdivision surface, because that makes it a lot slower in my experience. For the cheese, we want something different. So let's also copy it on top of the cube, but we are going to make adjustments to the values. So we want a 50% structural value and we also want a 50% damping to this. So that will make it a bit more bouncy. Let's also go with 50 on all the other values that will come. 
so that's easy. The stiffness can also be a bit less, so it can flow more naturally over the mead. And also less of a damping, so 50% again. And we're also going to make this a bit more bouncy under the collision tab. So let's make that double, so something like 15%. The friction can stay as it is, okay. For the tomatoes, it can be a bit glitchy, I don't know why. Probably because we have the cylinders inside of the other parts. And it also doesn't need to be that much of a soft body, we can just apply a rigid body tag on this. So select all three of them, right click, simulation tags, and let's go with rigid body. If it misbehaves on your side, I'm not sure yet if it will, you can also play with the inherit tag and make it apply to the children. And if that doesn't work, you can also select all of the shapes inside of it, right click and connect objects and delete. And that's what I'm going to do for this one. It's not dynamic anymore in the modeling kind of way, but it's a safer and faster way to have this model behave like we wanted to in the animation. Okay, so that's all the tags we want, except for the one at the top bun and the crumbs. So we can also apply this rigid body at the crumbs at the top here. So let's just do it like that. Make sure you go inside of the tag and set the inherit tag to apply to children. Okay, so that should be fine, I think. And now we're going to the last one, which will be for the top bun. So let's copy the original bun one and add it to this sphere. And we're going to change the values again. And this one will be quite different because we don't want it to be as heavy. So if we keep it as it is right now, it would just press all the way to the bottom and squeeze everything outside of that and we don't want that of course. So let's change this and have just a bounce of 10% again and go in the soft body options. The structural one can be at all the way at 100. The damping can be way lower at 20%. We're going to set the shear to 50 with a damping of 20% again. Same thing goes for this one. What we can also do is going in the mass of this and we want a custom mass so it is not as heavy as I just said and you're going to make this really small so 0.5 and that should do I think. One more thing I would like to point out before playing all of this is that you can go under the options of the whole scene on its own and set some kind of gravity options so if we press command or control and D you can go in here and select the dynamics options here you can set the gravity of everything, but by default it should be fine. But one more interesting feature you can use is this time scale at the top. So I used that in the preview video uh, to get this slow motion effect. So if you animate this scale by pressing this button, for example from 10% all the way to 100%, you get this nice transition of the parts just flying around slowly and then stacking on top of each other like it should be. So now is the right moment to save your file again and there are just a few more things we need to do before hitting the play button because it will freeze for you I'm pretty sure about that unless you render it in the picture viewer it will not freeze so you can do that if you want to but that's not a fast preview like we wanted to so what we are going to do is breaking the dynamics of the model so we have all these deformers right here we are going to turn this in one solid shape and that makes it easier to preview so how we are going to do this is selecting the object and all the deformers, right click and hit connect objects and delete. So we're going to do that on all of them, especially the lettuce one is important because if we don't do this, it will glitch through the bun and we don't want that. So even if you render in the picture viewer, you want to do it on the lettuce. The meat is just fine. Let's go with the cheese as well. The tomatoes are also fine by now. We also have the one at the top here where the seeds are being projected on. So let's make sure we set the seeds first. So click on this and make sure the instance mode is set back to instance. That way we can make it editable by pressing C on the keyboard and get all the small ones inside of it. Right click on the group, select all the children and we can connect the objects and delete again. So we have one salt piece. Now we can go ahead and collapse the top bun as well. We're also going to make the seeds a child of this sphere so it follows along. Okay, so that should be fine, but if you preview this, I recommend disabling the subdivision surface on this because it will try to subdivide all the small seeds and that is a bit heavy on the computer. Okay, so one last thing we need to make sure is that we have the dynamics on the crumbs, right? So we have this apply to children tag set up already, but we want to make sure we have the individual elements 
turned on on all of them. That way they can fall individually instead of just one invisible cube of crumbs. Also, you want to set up the friction to maybe 95% or something. So with that all being set up, it should preview just fine in the viewport. It may be a bit slow, but it works and doesn't freeze. If you want to take a look at the exact file I created with the camera motion added to it as well, you can download that on the Patreon page. So that's all I wanted to show you guys today. I hope you learned something new from it and I will see you in the next video.